Sometimes you'll notice in a match that there is really no more option for you and that you're going to be too late. Well, then it's time to take a shortcut. And in this video, I'm going to show you what those shortcuts can be. My name is Olaf Kozolowski. This is Table Tennis Technolytics. Let's go. Wat is dat bedoeling van? Jij weet, jij weet wat plan hiervan is. Ik slaag de bal naar de GSM en toevallig kan het eens een keer op u zijn, oké? Okay? Is het uw beurt? Is het uw beurt? We zullen zien of het volgende keer uw beurt nog is als jij aan de straat mocht staan. So, welcome back again to Antwerp, where I'm here right now in the Kilipong Hall, hall of my sponsor. And today we're going to look into a few times where you can be too late in a rally. Sometimes it's just inevitable, everybody is going to be too late, but what you do with that situation when you're too late, that will set you apart from other people. So, this time we're not really looking into a few key points, but more so we're going to look at a few shots and the specific way of performing them. We're going to look at um, just over the table, just a short ball. We're going to look at backhand. We're going to look at forehand, middle. Uh, basically, those ones will be taking a, a deeper dive into. And the first thing we'll be looking into is the cross step. Cross step is something which occurs when you come from a step round ball and the ball afterwards will come deep into your forehand. And then the distance that you have to travel is sometimes a little bit too long to just close it in a couple of steps. So then the cross step comes in handy. You do this by obviously crossing your legs. So you finish your movement, you get back. And the next thing you do is basically like just a jump. So the, for, my, for me, it's going to be the right leg. The right leg crosses the left leg. But as you're doing this, you're turning with it as well. You're turning with it as well. I'm not doing it in uh, such an explosive way because I have to pay attention of the mic. So I'll just show you how it is to be performed in a small box or something. I'll, I'll play a video at the moment. So again, you finish the movement. Normally you do one extra step just before you're really going to launch yourself to that forehand. And then in one swift motion, you're crossing, you're getting back, and you're playing this forehand all at the same time. What is important to remember here is that as you're doing this movement, you need to push yourself back forward. So if you end the movement, don't land. For me, it's going to be on the left leg because I'm a left-handed player. But for right-handed players, don't land on their, their right leg. So just the dominant leg. I'll just abbreviate it. So don't end your movement too much on the dominant leg. And otherwise you're going to be leaning back a bit too much. You're not going to be able to push yourself back in time to be able to be ready for the next ball. So again, this cross step and try as much as you can to just land on your non-dominant leg so you can play forward and so you can get back for the next ball. Okay, next one is not really controversial but it's something which is really almost never used. So it's about taking one step. It's again about the forehand. You take one step as you're playing the forehand. This is more related in a passive situation. So when you're being in time pressure, all of a sudden the ball comes into your forehand. Sometimes you need to do a shortcut, just cut the corner. And somebody who does this very well is Timo Ball. Timo Ball does this very well by, as you're taking this step, you're playing your shot, all right? So I'll try to demonstrate it a bit more from the side so that you see how this step is to be done. Um, so as the ball comes into your forehand, so let's just say I'm standing around the middle, around the back end of the table. So ball comes into my forehand and as I'm playing the shot, I'm taking the step. So ball comes there, I cut the corner and I go back. Again, it's not as easy to do and for some people, not, not that it's controversial, but for some people it's hard, very hard to get back after this ball. It's not that the other foot stands completely still, but here it's not moving as much with the other leg as normal. As normal. So normally if you go to your forehand, so 
both legs are just basically staying around the same width. With this ball, it's your dominant leg, which is going a little bit further. This might move a little bit with it as well. But again, you're going to be in a wider stance at the end of the shot than at the beginning of the shot. Next up is the middle. The middle, and here we're going to see basically what I want to show in another video also, which is coming a little bit further down the road, about how basically during the rally you cannot really stay at you cannot stay static. You have to be dynamic all the time, you have to move your feet all the time, even when you're playing the shot. So it's basically just you moving all the time, making you more explosive, making you more ready for the ball afterwards. So in the middle, what do you want to do? And not even when you're too late, just in general. So what you'll do is as you're playing the shot, as you're playing the shot, you're sliding a little bit. You cannot really jump, but it's more of a slide. If you jump too much, well, uh, you'll lose control. Ball will go over the table. It's a bad thing to do. You'll lose your posture. A lot of things will go bad. No, you want to slide with, for me, it's going to be the right leg. For right handers, it's going to be the left leg. They will do like this. Well, me, I'm going to do like this. Why am I really emphasizing this right leg? Why am I emphasizing this slide? Well, it's because a lot of people, when the ball comes in the middle and they're a little bit too late, what they will do is this leg, my dominant leg, might go back, but this one won't. This one won't, and this will lead to you leaning a bit backwards, will lead to you to play the ball not with as much quality as you could, and also with you not being able to get back into position for the next ball. So there, that's what I mean with this slide, it's very important. It's very important with you staying active, with you being able to put enough quality in this middle, even when you're a little bit out of position. You can really recover well after this ball, so really think about this, it's very important. Now we're looking at the step around. Basically the technique I just showed you before about the slide in the middle, it's normally it's quite applicable for also your your forehand where you step around. But if you're really too late and you don't have enough time to make room for yourself, well, then this is what you can do. So, a lot of Chinese players use this technique and over time I learned to appreciate also a little bit more because it looks a bit strange and you purposely don't make enough room for yourself. So, what they'll do is instead of leaning back to create more space. No, they try to stay forward as much as they can, but they'll lean on this leg a little bit. For me, it's going to be the right leg. For right-handed players, it's going to be the left leg. They'll lean on this leg a little bit, and their racket and their arm, they try to keep it as much as they can in front of their body. So this will propel the ball forward, and you not leaning back too much, this will also keep you, this will also prevent you from playing the ball over the table. Again, it's a little bit advanced, it's not as easy to do. This video is all about last minute situations, about not plan A's, not plan B's, but plan F's. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Just really last minute options. So this is a last minute option, this is what it's meant for. So again, I'll try to show it. You're not moving, you're not doing a step, you're not sliding in this shot, you're just standing still, you're standing still, without leaning back too much, you're trying to move your arm in front of your body and try to keep the ball also in front of your body. Don't touch the ball too late, that's also very crucial with this. So I forgot to put the mic on, I forgot to put the mic on in that video, which is a little bit stupid, yeah. So I suppose I'll just have to explain it here in the studio, so to say. No, what I was going to say in that last bit about the long push, by the way, if you could uh, read lips, you would, you would see that it was going to be about the long push. Basically what I'm saying is it's better if you're unsure or if you're too late and the ball comes short, then it's always better to just push long and then expect the opponent to take the initiative to start the rally and then you have to 
try to react as good as possible. Because if you try to receive short on a ball where you're out of position, on a ball where you're not sure what the rotation is, or where you're just too late and you're completely leaning forward, see, then you're going to not play that ball with enough quality. If you want to receive that ball short, you're not going to. You're not going to. At the very best, you're going to get like a half high, half long ball, but that gives you too much of a chance for your opponent to just play on that ball and you're going to be in a very disadvantageous position. So it's always better to just push long. And of course, that's not a, guar a guaranteed point for you, but it gives you at least a chance to recover in that rally. So just always push long if you're too late. So last thing, just try to do what feels right. Now, especially when a lot of people are just opening the status quo of what is correct and what is not correct, it's not the time to be too rigid about what is right, what is not right. If the ball comes into your middle, you're not obligated by law to take this ball with your forehand. If Timo were to take every ball in the middle with his forehand, then would we ever get those amazing rallies where he would play this counter top backhand? Well, no, you wouldn't, all right? So again, don't try to adhere to the norm too much. There is some room for error, not really room for error, but you can be a little bit creative. You can be more creative than you think. So again, that was the video guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you get something from it or if you don't, or if you have any questions about it, please leave a comment. Um, I do appreciate, again, as I say always, I do appreciate the feedback or the discussion that can come from these videos. So. If you have any questions, any suggestions for other videos, just leave them down below. I'll take a look at it. And thank you again very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.